folks, welcome to the breakdown episode eight. My boy Sensei is in his Phase Clan branded old ass Tom Brady shirt. Uh, yeah, like I said, episode eight, we're back. Uh, quick check ins. We have not spoken in one week. And I didn't get to say this on the podcast. Uh, maybe we did or we didn't do it on camera, but I want the people to know you're engaged, man. Congratulations, by the way. Yes, that's right. Man Thank is you. engaged to be married. Wow, that's that's right. right. Ladies in the comments, sorry about it. Man's is taken. You see the fresh lineup. You see the Tom Brady jersey. I know you want some of that, but too bad you ain't getting none of it, bro. I'll take all. None listen, it, I'll take all the ladies, okay? You know what I'm saying? Take some of that, all right? I got, I got that going, all right? But... I'm engaged, Transitions, with the reason we are here today, obviously the podcast, yes. but another reason, the biggest news story, the thing we have to start out with, Jake Paul, Tommy Fury. This Bruh. fight is cursed, my man. I haven't got your thoughts on it yet, so talk to me about what you know and what you think of this whole situation. So I was just seeing the, you know, I really, I, I really flipped. After this happened, I was like flipped to like totally team Jake here. Yeah, so right. I'm like, bro, come on. You got to be kidding this me. Is like, this is and nuts. And it's still quiet on his end right now, too. Jake's been kind of outing him on everything and the things that he possibly could do to fix this. And it's still quiet from Tommy, as I assume, unless he heard something recently in the last hour or two. I haven't heard anything. Here's what's happening Tommy Fury is one of two things here. He is either, there's a purpose, and this is like very much speculation on my end, but it's, purposefully trying to negotiate this fight back to the UK so that John Fury can be a part of it, so that Tyson Fury can be a part of the the, the corner, which I don't think is the case, but the, I mean, it's at this point, right. it's a possibility. Or the Fury family is is connected to an Irish mob boss in some fashion. Like what, dude? And it's not going to be easy to get Tommy over to the US. And in fact, if that's the case, if he's in connection with this Daniel Kinahan guy, through Tyson, I don't think it's fair to Tommy. I don't think it's his fault, but it's not looking good for August sixth. If that's the case, I don't see how he gets across. Didn't when did Tommy just fight? When was that last event that he fought on? He fought, but he fought in the UK. He fought on Tyson and Dillian White's undercard. Who did no the other? Um, oh, the Jake he, fight. Um, that one was last year. Last, um, it was the Tyre so was One fight. So it was almost, yeah, almost almost a year ago, actually. Yeah, so almost a year ago. So this happened recently. I saw that it said that the kid, the guy got flagged, like, in January or something. Yeah. So, Is that what happened? So it happened recently? Yeah, so Tommy's been flagged. He's had visa issues before. So it's it, like I said, it's one of two things. Either Tommy's dealing with a standard work visa, vacation visa issue, where he is has the wrong visa and he has to go get it fixed. Or, again, it's this Irish mob boss situation where I don't know how that gets fixed. How, if, if Tyson Fury has tried now twice in the last week, I don't know if you saw this, tried to, to go to the U.S. twice and got denied both times, if you yeah. can't get him a flight and he's the heavyweight champ of the world and you can explain, hey, he's got business, he's going to be doing, how are you going to get Tommy a flight when you have to explain he's going to go fight a YouTuber? And not that not not to disrespect it, but it, it doesn't look as serious when you're trying to right, explain. Right, right, of course, you know what I mean? of course, it's, it doesn't seem like you think that they just, come on, let them over. But if they're not getting Tyson over, you're right. It just it's going to have to depend on what exactly is happening here. Is this a visa issue that can be readily fixed, or is this a really really, you know, high level thing that the American government and the Irish government are involved in? Six hundred people on a ban list. No one's going anywhere. <clears throat> they're they're going to crack right. down on this mob boss. I feel like it's more of the mob boss issue because, I mean, unless, because if it was the regular visa issue, you would think they would have already had that handled by You would think, right? If it was just a simple think, issue with the, okay, we switch it, okay, we're good. Right. I but, don't know, man. It, it it feels to me, though, like the way that John Fury was talking about, you know, we can't come over here, bring it to the UK, and he was very adamant about the fact that they just weren't going to go, like him and Tyson, obviously, John's been banned for years now, but... <laughs> it seems as though they are comfortable not fighting, or at least John is, and he's in Tommy's ear. And I talked about this on True Jordy. We, we talked about the yeah. same thing. It does seem like John wants to be such a big part of this that he could potentially be part of the reason it, it, it's kind of falling through now because he does, for whatever you want to say about John, he has Tommy's ear, right? He has at least one side of it. With this situation with the visa, now, you know, would John continue to say what he's saying? Whatever he's saying, if he can be leaning towards, nah, bro, let's push it out, let's do this, or let's try to get to the UK, nah, let's just bring it to the, you could, I could see him really trying to do that. 
And I can and and here's another thing too that I don't know if a lot of people are talking about, but Tommy is not with Shane McGuigan, right? He's with this is this has been confirmed. He is he's training with Shane McGuigan, and the McGuigans, or at least Shane, has spoken out pretty. And I don't want to say ill, but he's basically condemned the Furies for working with Daniel Kinahan, and I think there's a bit of a rift there already. So you mm. could have a situation where Tommy's Damn. dad is on one side, and we have some infighting with Tommy's actual boxing team. One because John. Feels, and he says he's in charge of Tommy's career, but now since he can't be associated and Tommy's trying to go to the U.S. without him, maybe there's a little bit of back and forth infighting there, and and that's part of the reason we're getting some of this. And you got Jake Paul in the middle of it, just living it and up. I was gonna say, and Jake's doing the right eating thing. All that up, he's doing the, the the right thing. As much as Jake is putting a lot of this on Tommy, and I don't know if it's necessarily Tommy's fault yet. If we get more information that says this is a purposeful thing, okay. But Jake's doing right. the right stuff, right? He's saying, Tommy's scared. He's saying, you're not going to the embassy to get your visa. I'm already in New York training. You're, you're, this is your biggest payday. You're blowing it again. He's doing all the right stuff here. Like, he's pushing the envelope. He's pushing the issue to try to get this thing happen. And I don't blame him. It's he, they, they locked down Madison Square Garden. You know the venue know, fees right? for that? On that That's date crazy. in the summer when all these concerts are going to start coming back? No, dude. If I'm Jake, there's no way you, you you give that up unless you absolutely have to, and it's going to be a massive loss if they do. Let's talk about this, though. Let's say, and I'll give you a couple scenarios. Let's say Tommy can't make it. it it's not happening. He's he's too tied up in the Irish you know, mob, and, and he's got to go and be a hitman for Daniel Kinahan. I don't know. I shouldn't actually probably say that, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I heard nothing. I'm yeah, out of here. We, we don't want no smoke, Irish. We just, uh, if he can't make it, who is the next guy? Is is there a next guy in your opinion? Do they cancel this event? Do they push it back? Do you think it happens in the UK? Do I think it? Do do you, think- I'll ask you. Do you think it's more likely they go to the UK or Jake tries to find a replacement? Uh, Jake just said what he'll fight for fifteen million. So he fight put for a number fifteen on it. mil. But I think he he chose that number very specifically because I don't think there's any right. shot in hell they're coming up with fifteen mil. I feel like if he does, it's so gangster for him to do that if he did, still does it anyways. But and I, and I can see, I was going to say, I could see Jake doing it. I could see him hopping on a plane and going over there just to prove a point. But that, and then if he wins that, that'd be if, so And gangster, if he wins dude. it, it's legendary. Like you can't oh, it's take over. shit from him if he wins that one. Over but after that. I think his team is going to rightfully advise him not to do that. One, because they have so much money invested in this event already. They probably already have an undercard that we don't know about. So it's not just Jake. So you think it would replace, who would replace? That's the question, right? You can't get Nate. He's still under contract. Oh, that would have been sick. Anderson Silva's there. Uh, he has a fight, I think, in November or September. I'm sure you throw enough money at him. You could probably get him in quicker. Anderson is a step-in fight. It's interesting when you have like someone stepping in because I think some of the pressure comes off of Jake because the, yeah, the, less, the expectation is like okay, but now he has to do this. You're kind of mm-hmm. he's dealt this, you know, this deck. Now he has to just deal with it. So yeah, you can kind of win, win win some brownie points. Let's say he you know puts up a good fight against Anderson Silva, right? Even if he doesn't win, if he you know obviously if he wins, it's legendary. But even if he puts up a good fight, it's like okay. Exactly. So to fight Anderson Silva on short notice, like that's crazy in any world. On Tommy's end too, if he wants to continue to box, it's really bad if you are like avoiding a fight with Jake Paul. I know, but but like also you to, you, you kind of need to make it happen. Yeah, no, it's it's a no? it's a bad look to be in Tommy's position. And again, I don't even blame Tommy. I feel like this is kind of out of his hands, but I do feel yeah. like I blame Team Fury here because if this was an issue and Tyson. I think two or three weeks ago, got stopped. Immediately, I would have been checking to say, hey, listen, am I on this? Like, I would be booking phantom flights, right? I'd be booking a ticket that I wasn't even meant to, like, I wasn't even going to leave. I'm just going to go up to the counter and say, yo, can I leave if I need to? Because at this point, you, you didn't do your due diligence. Now you're scrambling, and it looks like either you're, like you said, it's a bad look, you don't want to fight the YouTuber, or from John Fury's end, this is all some kind of big manipulation to get it to be in the UK, and it just it doesn't look great for a professional boxer. We did have uh, KSI coming out and, and chirping Jake, right? He was he was basically saying, "Come fight on my undercard." He was chirping Austin McBroom. 
Uh, what did you think about some of that from KSI? He hasn't been as active on Twitter recently, but he he was going after guys like 2018 style going after guys on Twitter. Classic menace mode. Classic yeah. menace mode, bro. So the reason he looks like he's clowning these events because now it's official. We've seen it. It's confirmed. KSI's event looks like the only healthy thing going, and we now have his opponent, KSI versus Alex Wasabi. Give me your first thoughts. JJ, he, he did. he's cutting the weight. Cutting the weight. Most people thought he couldn't cut it, wasn't going to do it. He's cutting the weight. Yeah. And I think, dude, he's going to – He's been doing a lot better boxing yeah. training wise. We've heard some things. He's smoother. Like you heard Leon say, he's no, he's at shoot. We knew he's at shoot fighters over there with, uh, mm -hmm. with a couple of the guys like MVP and, and some of the, the fighters out of there. Give me your takes on all that. So we'll talk about the opponent, obviously Alex Wasabi, but first yes. let's talk about shoot fighters and, and KSI being over there. What do you think is the benefit of him being there? Oh, I love it. I, I know people might think it's biased because I do martial arts and like I'm an MMA guy. Um, but Obviously, KSI is not a traditional boxer, and he's not going the traditional boxing route. Yeah. So for him to be in the gym with those kind of people, mm -hmm. training with those level of fighters, mm -hmm. to me is invaluable. Yeah. That's like the most important thing. It's, yes, the coaching is obviously great. It's high level. But like your training partners in the gym and the people that you're surrounded with, the mentality, the, your approach, you know, getting a chance to spar, those little things, because like the the sparring that I've done with people that are like high level, I've taken so much from those you know sparring sessions and even those training sessions with people. So, yes, the coaching, there's the the science, the sweet science behind it. That's all proven, and it's like KSI doesn't need. He's not training. He's not fighting Canelo for someone like KSI, like you mentioned, to be the least experienced guy in the room to have to to be in an environment like that with those guys. You know, with straight killers. Yep. No, I th I thought it was and crucial. And the boxing is there. To me, that's huge. It's huge. I thought it was crucial for him to, to get away from anything involved with the YouTube training partners, the YouTube scene with that, right? And not that he ever has done that fully in his camp, but even, you know, I, I think just him and, and, like you said, surrounding himself with true fighters, the work ethic, and you said it, the mentality of those guys on a daily basis, right? To be in that gym, to be soaking in that environment, I think is crucial. But in what way do you see KSI attacking Alex? Because there's a—I said this on True Jordy. There's a path to victory here for Alex, but albeit very slim, it's still a fight at the end of the day. What is KSI going to look like in this fight, in your opinion? Number one, I want to see what weight they're going to be fighting at, because if Alex has to go up a little bit, that's going to be even tougher on Alex. I would assume right, cause they're going to be light heavyweights. I would assume 175 minimum. Right. So that means and Alex is going up to that. Yes. So that's obviously not good. We saw that with, you know, I-dubs and... Uh, I was going to say, Mike. and even Alex, when we were there, he told us. He was like, I, I don't know if I can get to 175. Right. So if he disagrees to it because of the event, that's another giant hurdle for him. But, but KSI, to me, it's like, okay, if he's gun shy, he's never been gun shy. So, it, you know, does he walk into something? And that's no, you know what I mean. Saying so, the only thing I could see is, I think KSI. I think his expectation is to have like a, a highlight finish. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't get the highlight finish but wins, that could be a negative. Right. That's the only real downside I think. And in, in, in KSI's point of view, you know what I'm saying. And and I would say, and and a lot of the people, a lot of the public's point of view here too, right? That. KSI has kind of stacked a lot of pressure on himself with this. And I don't anticipate that being a problem for him. I'm just saying, if you go in and say, I'm going to finish this guy, you're not on my level. I, you're not even a, a side quest that I'm on. You're just a, a, in the way. You're a body in the way, and I'm going to knock you out. Like, if he doesn't do this, because people, all, far be it from me to, to, you know, if it's the right conclusion or not, they are going to look at this right. as a gimme fight for, for KSI. That's what it's going to look yeah. like. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, he's going to have to go in and, and prove that. But in a controlled manner, like I said, you get overzealous, even if you don't think Alex is a threat, he becomes one at that point. Yeah, if he goes in and tries to chase the knockout, you know, gas himself out, which I don't see happening. But Maybe we, we – I don't know if we talked about it on camera, but give me – if there is a, a way for Alex to win – even like I said, if it's a small path to victory, how do you see that being? You think he's just going to have to to be on the bike the entire time? Yes, he has to fight. 
you it's gonna it has to be a super mental approach. You have to outsmart KSI. Yeah. You're not gonna fight him. You're not gonna you're not gonna beat him toe to toe. Right? We we already we've seen Alex fight, we see the way he fights, we've seen JJ fight. He just fought Logan Paul. You know, yeah. it just you can see him handle the bigger people. So it's gonna be hard. You're not gonna brawl with them. That's not Alex's you know, style. Right. So he has to really outsmart him. Yeah. You know, try to get him to chase the knockout. He has to bait him, has to over clinch. He has to look for opportunities to score, make it hard for him to hit. Lots of feints, lots of drawing out. You know, I don't know if I was even thinking like <laughs> if you if he was able to frustrate JJ to the point where causing like deductions or disqualification yeah. or it's those type of things. Yeah. Where you get in his head. Yeah. Um, and you try and, to, and I, it's going to have to be one of those mental, intense mental games that he pulls yeah. on him. And and KSI is is from what we've seen in this scene, you know, a guy that's really hard to get shaken, right? You, it's hard to shake him, and right. whether that's in the pre-fight build or in the fight itself, even being down early in the first Logan fight, it, it's hard to get him out of there. And so, if you're Alex, you know, I'm not gonna be. I, I know Alex. We know him at this point. He's not a guy that like goes and does the acting like showman stuff before the fight. I would tell him to lean into the big deji stuff because that seems to just go at. <laughs> since KSI to a different level. But for sure, for sure. I think for Alex, like you said, he's going to have to be damn near perfect <clears throat> that night. Um, and I'm not saying he can't do that, but it, it's, it looks like that's what it's going to have to take. A combination, like the perfect storm almost, right? The combination of KSI, yeah. a little bit of ring rust, maybe a little overzealous, like we saw in the second uh, Logan Paul fight. I expect KSI also to be coming forward heavy. We have to remember that we, we've seen a back and forth match that's because he was fighting someone the size of Logan Paul. And even then, he was on the front foot most of the fight. Correct. And he had yeah. to figure out a way to get on the inside. But he's not right. fighting someone where he's that's going to be an issue. I expect him to be, you know, lick at his chomps and just yeah. slam at his chest like he did against Joe Weller and just <laughs> trying to come forward. It's a fun one, though, man. We finally got it. August 27th, KSI, Alex Wasabi. Hopefully, the undercard is going to be announced soon. We'll see. But this thing, again... Breaking news, it just came out today, so wanted to get you guys that. We were prepared for it, so yeah, you know, can't wait. Look at them shoulders. You got something. Never mind. We'll leave that. But he also went after another event that's happening even sooner that we, again, still don't know much about. Let's talk about Austin McBroom's event on July 30th. Have you seen anything that's been happening? Well, nothing's really been happening with it uh, as far as ticket sales because the tagline is, no more talk. And as Gibbs said, it seems like everybody on the event is sticking to it. What is happening with this thing? Dude, I don't know. You saw the thing with Boy Temper, how he was going to fight. Um, I did. Who is he going to fight? Landon, which again. Landon. We talked about that. I don't know. I mean, fair play to Landon for going after it. You know what I'm saying? The guy's yeah. a dog. But I don't see that. That didn't make a lot of sense to me. But credit to your boy Temper for standing up for, 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 uh, for Jarvis. But... We do have some new fights. Have you seen some of this? There are some fights that are on this event that I do have to say are pretty interesting. Speaking of, we'll start with your boy Landon. Looks like he's going to be fighting Adam Sala. Yes. How about that one, huh? Another easy fight for Adam. I haven't seen too much of Landon. The only thing we've seen of him was fighting who I called uh, a high school musical extra, Ben Azelart. Um, oh, yeah. It's hard to get a lot from that, right? Landon butchered him. But he was supposed to. The guy was doing like ballerina twirls in the ring. So it wasn't right. like it was a very tough fight for Landon, but this will be. And Adam's um Adam Slick. Last fight was against that um He was against boxer, the right? uh, the kid? Wild Sharks kid. Yeah, the the, the Wild Sharks everybody kid, calls yeah. him the seventeen year old. But to be fair, that seventeen year old was a was a pretty skilled boxer. Of course, yeah, he was a he. You know how to box. It wasn't like he yeah. just trying out boxing. Right, he was a boxer. That kid was probably more skilled than than I would say eighty to ninety percent of our scene. Landon, obviously, I think is a bit bigger. We're we're probably talking the one fifty to one sixty range. I think Adam, I don't okay. know if Adam hits one forty. I, I know he's a he's a little bit smaller, so he can hit one forty one fifty. Okay, so maybe maybe I'm yeah. wrong there. Maybe Adam is a little bigger, which would be good. It, it, that was one of the not big for things. fight weight, but like walk around weight. Yeah, so he can make it. Yeah. That was one of the big things with me that I was worried about if if you're an Adam fan because, listen, I've seen enough film on Adam to know he can box. And right. I just haven't yeah, seen enough sure. on Landon, and I know he's been training. But I, I, I got to lean – I would lean Adam here. I think he, he the experience Adam has, he's been doing this for – I mean, he's been in a boxing ring since he – I think he said like he was 12 or 13 years old. Yeah, no, I, that's what I was saying. I think, I think this is uh, 
Easy dub for Adam. We just haven't seen enough with Landon. Maybe he comes out like a world beater. Shoot, I had never seen anything on temper, and he looks like one of the best guys in the scene right. after one fight, you know? Yeah. So who knows, right? No one truly knows, and Adam has been dropped before, but that was the fixed fight or whatever that was. But Adam coming over in the U.S., which is what we kind of said he needed to do to get back into the good graces of this scene. Yes. And he's doing it against one of the Social Gloves family members, so that can even earn you a little respect. Yeah, this is a very good opportunity for Adam. How about this one? And I know you're going to like this fight. I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. There's another fight rumored. I don't know if it's confirmed yet, but rumored to be on this card. I don't know. I've been wedding planning, bro, like every day, so I don't know. Bro, you're going to fucking die. Listen to this. Adrian Peterson, the running back. Oh, bro, I did see this. Versus Adrian Peterson. Le'Veon Le'Ve- Bell. Bro, I can't believe I forgot about this. I'm telling you, as much as this fight won't, like, it'll get national attention because of who they are, but in the YouTube scene, people won't really, like, care about this fight. I'm fucking pumped. This, bro, it's gonna be battering Rams. Dude. This it's is gonna be maybe the most bulls. outside of the main event. This is the fight I will be most interested in, regardless. This is it right here because I know Le'Veon Bell can box. Maybe not great, but I know he has been boxing just in off-season training, kind of like Frank Gore for a long time, right? We saw Frank Gore. Yeah, and, I did and see some. I, I I researched a while ago. I saw some mitts. Yeah, so it's it's not it was, like, but it was old. It was old. Though. It's not like a Nate Robinson deal where he said he'd been boxing but had never touched gloves before. Like Le- Le'Veon can actually box. Give me give me early predictions here. I mean, I'm going Le'Veon, but dude, Adrian Peterson is my guy, bro. AP is my guy, dude. You're talking about like the perfect like build for a running back, like yeah. the graded player that you Six, make in three, Madden. Two thirty. Both guys, by the way. Le'Veon's tall, too. I don't think people realize he's a tall guy, too. I know, because the way he played, he always played yeah. so patient and stuff that you forget he's a big dude. Yeah. He shredded the weight, too. When he was at Michigan State, he was a bit bulkier, shredded the weight when he was in Pittsburgh. But I'm, I'm interested in this one, man. I think Le'Veon— but AP's going to be explosive, dude. You just, yeah. I just feel like he's going to come forward and try to like tackle him, like yeah. run him over, lower his shoulder. I see Le'Veon being a little more loose, though, bro. I see I see him being a little more, like you said, patient. He was a patient running back in the NFL— Obviously, eight. Yeah, but what is it? What is the weight? What is the weight? They're at heavyweight. It says this is from ESPN Ringside. See, it's tricky at this level because someone may be the better boxer, but like you being the better boxer may not be enough because you're not good enough yet at this level. So to me, it's like almost like who's the better puncher? We, I just the, haven't seen anything on it. Who's the harder hitter? Who's the harder you know puncher? Saying? Exactly. Yeah. Which, right. So you have like is Peterson just. He may come out and just be smashing freaking heavy bags, dude. AP is, you know? in my opinion, I don't want to say far more, but was the more exp- explosive player. Like, yes, was far more explosive. Avion was always a more smooth, relaxed, kind of laid back. He was a big guy, but he wasn't a power running back. No, no, he's very finesse. Adrian Peterson is the. <laughs> and he, Adrian Peterson, would finesse, juke you out your shoes, and then step on the next guy as he stiff armed his way for to contact. The end. Like if he's on the sideline, he's not running out yeah, of bounds. Yeah, like here's the sideline. No. He's running towards he's the running sideline. Sees up it, you and plants, and he's coming to drive. <laughs> I've seen a, an interview of him talking about that. Like he's like, yeah. I, I initiate. I am yeah. the hammer. Yes, dude. Do you remember when he stepped over William Gay? Brett Favre throws in the little shovel pass out the backfield. Yes. He turns, runs, trucks him, steps on him, and keeps going, bro. He he was he was a freak of nature, bro. Listen, running back is my favorite position of all the sports. Yeah. And he, he like he's number three on my list. So I mean, just just off fandom alone, you're going AP here, yeah? Oh, one hundred percent AP. One hundred percent. This is why I say Le'Veon didn't. I think he's still in relatively, I don't know how good of shape, not that AP is ever in bad shape, but I just don't know how good of boxing yeah. shape he'll be in because uh, this is a big transition, right? You're talking about an explosive sport where you play for six seconds and then stop and then to train, and I don't know how long he's been training boxing. Maybe he has been. But That's the thing you just don't know. Maybe he has been, right? Maybe he's he, maybe he it's obviously. A, it, what happens is you get like an uncle or a dad who was a boxer, and you grow up, and all of a sudden you got you, you right. can move you a, a little, little something. Bit. Right. We just don't know. Yeah, no. You know, yeah. he shows you as a kid, and you, you know you can throw it a jab, and you understand the mechanics yeah. that happens to some people. So I, I wanted to talk to you about this. What did you think of my appearance on the True Jordy podcast? Did Let's you get go, to see any dude, of I was it? Hyped. Yeah. Yes, I was hyped, dude. I was just it was just dope to see you. You talked about it, you know. You talked about it, so to actually make it happen was sick. You've come onto the scene quite quickly, even though you've been doing, you've been yeah. grinding forever. Yeah. But you had your first like live event with the Creator Clash. Yep. And now you know 
these big collabs are happening and then like a major one with, with True Jordy, you know, that's like it's it's dope. The reason I asked was because we talked about you a little bit. You know, we, we talked uh, again about you and I wanted to ask, you know, your thoughts on not only mine, but we hadn't talked about the Logan podcast uh, where, where you were mentioned in the Logan podcast as a potential YouTuber for Logan to, to possibly fight, you know, outside of a Dylan Dennis fight. And we'll talk about that in a second, too. But yeah, yeah. Um, what did you he was think? Like, nah, of, it doesn't make sense. I was like, ah, it kind of makes sense. I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Logan's reasoning was was I, I understood as well. But would if that were the case? All things considered, how do you think you would fare in a Logan Paul fight? See, here's the thing: I have not seen myself uh, with a full camp, yeah, fully trained, so like, like, in, in fully conditioned. I would feel like I need to be better than what I am now. Okay, for sure. I know me right now. Uh, I don't feel confident. Cause I haven't been, you know, sparring or even fighting. I'm not active. Okay. You know, and I know you just fought Floyd. You know, we're talking. You know, it, the, the levels have level, changed. Yes. The levels have changed for sure, uh, and he's been training very intensely, you know, for a period of time. I know not as intensely as like Jake. I know because he had some time off, you know, and he doesn't want to be like a professional boxer. I know he has other things going on, but athletically, he just he just poses a lot of problems. Yeah, he poses a lot, a lot of problems, and I, I would assume I would do, uh, I would do well. I feel like I can handle quite a bit of it. But you're talking professional gloves, you know, he's fast, he's fast for his size. Yeah. You know, he's a lot more confident now. Um, but I feel like anybody in this scene, if I is able to prepare for a certain amount of time so I can be at a professional level, mm-hmm. condition-wise, athletically, and for the sport, like train like a professional boxer for, let's say, three months, you know, four or five months, whatever it is. Yeah, I think anybody in this scene, I'd, I'd be, I'd, you know, I could win. I could beat anybody. Basically what I said, I, I, I have the same opinion of you. I think he thought, by the way, I, I don't know if we this part got on the podcast, but Jordy thought very highly of you. Um, He thought, you know. And hey, I appreciate it. If we're ever out there, he, he wanted to, to have us both on there. But he, yeah, he was like, you know, Sensei is one of these guys that I think is just not talked about enough in this scene. But also right. it's understood because you haven't necessarily fought recently. But I, I wanted to get your opinion on it because I thought it was interesting. But yeah, man, this is what I've been saying. Feed someone to my boy Sensei, man. Eat him. Uh, you know, I wanted to do a couple little questions before we get out of here. Nothing too crazy, but I, I just been seeing some stuff around the old internet. Uh, did you see what happened yesterday at Jack Rabbit Boxing in, in Long Beach, California? Did you see this? No. So apparently, Fousey and Dean the Great have been training over at um, Jack Rabbit. And apparently, Anthony Taylor showed up yesterday, and there was a scrap. Fousey says that Anthony Taylor came in with, uh, tried to sneak Dean. What do you think about this, uh, th- this, this altercation? This is where, like, the influencer and YouTube thing kind of goes too far, where people try to do something for, for content, and it, it goes too far. Like, that's yeah. their intention is to go do something to create hype. Yeah. And it just crosses the line. Yeah. You know, like sneaking somebody or trying to sneak somebody now and we by we should say we don't know if that's the case there's there's been no footage right. of this this is just alleged stuff we don't know but i just thought it was interesting because i i don't i agree with you there are times where you sell fights if you have a fight with someone or you're trying to but you don't do it in a way that that causes our scene to look like a bunch of again amateurs or in a way that makes us look like we don't know what we're doing right and this is a professional fighter in anthony taylor i hope that's not the case but uh, and and Dean, I'm sure is getting ready for another fight too. So I I I saw that and I was like, what are we doing? Yeah, you can chirp back and forth and say to make sure the cameras are on. Yeah, yeah, do the whole call thing. each other out type yeah. thing. You know, stand across from each other in the in the ring or just approach him right in the in the gym type of thing. Yeah. You know, but if there was there was an altercation, like bruh, we're, we're guys, we're supposed to, you guys are supposed to be paid fighters. Anthony Taylor does seem like a guy that has a YouTube mind that does want to go create content, wants to create, you know, headlines, things for himself and fair play to him. But there's just a time and a place and there's the right way to do things. And, and again, you don't know how people are going to react to you if you come up and and they don't truly know you, they know you through the internet and it's just some people don't, don't take that, you know, lightly. So no, but I think Anthony could handle himself in any of those situations. I just, I hope that he wasn't walking around trying to sneak YouTubers. I, I don't understand that, but 
last thing we'll kind of wrap up with here. Did you see, shout out to, by the way, our guy, Daily, the Daily Effect. Did you see, uh, he, he put up an a, a Instagram post here the other day. I wanted to, to get your thoughts on this. He's hitting the heavy bag. He's digging to that heavy bag. Jesus Christ. Would, yeah, digging, dude. Would not want to be that heavy bag. And apparently ah. going ah. off on, yeah, he's, he's ripping, he's ripping mm. that thing. Um, and someone, I think, mentioned in his comments something about uh, you know getting in the ring. And, and actually fighting. Yes. And so I went through the comments on this because, like I said, I follow Daily. I, I think he's got a great. Uh, not only is he a great coach, I think his his page is awesome. And someone said Daily versus Temper, which is asinine. Like, why, don't say like that's just stupid. And fair play, Daily said, <laughs> "quote I'd walk that bitch down and slap him around his face." I did not know there was still heat there. Is there anything that you know, know about Daly's, that, or what's going on there? No, I just don't know if Daily is. You know, just playing the the scene. You know what I mean. Yeah. I don't know if he's just enjoying the hype and the boxing talk and just the bravado and everything. I don't know if he's just playing into it, and having fun with it. Yeah, I can see him. Be, I don't. I don't. I, I can't imagine it being serious. Yeah, I don't. I don't know because you know, he was super respectful after the fight and cordial. You know what I'm saying? He was super. He's a professional. Right. He is a professional, and and, and there's nothing wrong with him. Ex, you know, saying what if that's him talking his shit. I just didn't know. I was like. You know, that's just, there's still something there. But then I, I also I, I looked down in the comments, and you're also mentioned in here. Someone said, uh, yes, <laughs> someone said daily versus sensei. And this is what you keep talking about, by the way. When people are like, bro, what's you're going like, on, bro, dude? people always put me in fights that I do not want to like. <laughs> this doesn't bro. make any sense. This is what you're talking about. This stuff right here. But he did. He was. Bro. He did give you your flowers. He was like, yeah, you know, sensei's a cool guy, but I, I'd walk him down, do what I want with him, type stuff like that. But. I think he was a professional fighter. Dude. I was like, going to say, we... what do you guys expect when you ask the, it's, it's the, it's the, the, when the YouTube community gets deprived of boxing, the YouTube yes. boxing community, they start to, I don't want to they start to froth, right? They start to just throw things out there Correct. because they just want to see something. Right. And that happens a lot in my comment section. It happens right there too, though. But yeah, I didn't know if you had any insight, like, was there still Kenny and temper, still some bad blood there or anything between no, that I was wondering too. I was like, wow, it was a little aggressive towards Tommy. <laughs> A little bit, right? But you know, so I don't know. I mean, listen, again, I don't know if there's anything. Said some people or anything after you know, maybe, maybe, or it just could be the, the 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 taste of that loss still, right? It is still a competitive sport at the end of the day, and I think it might losses, be more just daily as a professional fighter. Somebody saying, right, putting it two together, like no, dude, it's more just like he's being. I think he's more saying it to the person who commented it. Right, it's not like I'm saying it too temper. It's like don't. Like, don't get it twisted. There's a level here. Right, right. It's more of a response. You asking that to, question is disrespectful to me. Like, correct. I think it's, yeah. it's more a response to just that the comment sense. in general. That makes sense. Yeah. And, I, and I, like I said, we both know Daly, at least somewhat super nice guy, super respectful guy. And I think he is, like I said, he's training some of these YouTubers to be, at, we'll see. Obviously, it didn't, ha- didn't go his way with the first one, but Kenny is supposedly going to be fighting again. Uh, Deji apparently is going to be fighting again from what we've talked to him off, off camera. So, I'm excited, man. Anyway, that is episode number eight. Jake Paul, Tommy Fury in flux. Complete. Who knows what's going to happen with that fight. Uh, KSI coming out. Coming for people's necks. Talking about their events. His event supposedly happening. We'll see. Subscribe on Apple and Spotify podcasts uh, for all your podcasting services as well. Like I said, we will be back hopefully with more news on a KSI card, hopefully with more news on a Tommy Fury, hopefully on Austin McBroom's event. We need more of these. Someone finalize something. Until next time, I appreciate you guys. We are out. And don't forget, Tom Brady is a GOAT, and so is MJ. We'll leave you with that. Oos.